Hey there, continuing with my methods, I'm just about to set, or actually have set, the fringe on the edge of the outer apron. And the way I do that is when I have chalked out the aprons, I finished sewing the pleats, I, when I finished the inside, when I was about to finish the inside apron, I measured a hand's breadth, a full span of my hand from the projected outer edge at the hip to and then made a mark and that's where I cut it off and then the extra I saved I tore off the extra bit which was about that wide put it to one side I did the same thing with the front apron here a hand span and then I take of that cloth that I'd ripped off I arrange it so that each strip has as much as possible sometimes sometimes it doesn't work but as much as possible you'll see in each of these there's about three-eighths to a half an inch between the raw edge, the ragged edge, and a change in the in the pattern. So I do that so that I have a guide when I'm when I'm working with this. So I've so I've laid these things out. I've arranged them so that as you can see, they're not stacked on top of each other. That one ends there, just in case it's a little too dark. That one that one ends there, so that when we rub our hand across it, we don't feel a big lump. It's 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 smoother because the next stage, of course is to turn the apron over top like that and we don't want to feel a hard ridge and we don't want to see the ridge when somebody presses the kill. So I've laid them out so that they are to, and they're not perfectly even. I made the first one slightly narrower and the, and the top one slightly wider just because that's how it occurred to me that I wanted to do it. And then I've pinned them all in place and then I take a peek underneath because the edge of the apron is going to be sewn here. And I want to sew both of these pieces to the apron piece. So I turn this over and let's see, if I sew it there, yeah, that'll be fine. So I'm going to make a mark here so that when I sew this, I can use a pad stitch, which of course is a very tiny stitch on this side, the visible side and that stitch will be aligned with the twill and a larger stitch in here which might be half an inch or three eighths or something like that so that stitch will be larger in here because this stitch this won't be seen because that's going to be underneath that's going to be concealed so right so the next stage I'll flip it over I'll put a piece down so I don't accidentally sew the two together that would be funny and then I can do a pad stitch there and now as far as the edge the ragged edge can, is concerned. I personally, it really doesn't matter when you do it. Well, you don't want to do this part. You don't want to fringe this upper one until the apron is finished. Um, you can do the other one sooner if you want. My personal preference, and it's just my idiosyncrasy, is that when the thing is done, um, the, the top band is in, the lining is in, is, in, is in, it's been pressed. I've given a good a going over and I've basically signed off on the work. I've passed everything as being acceptable to be released to the customer. It's only then, the last stage before I put my, my label on, I'll come back here and I'll tease out these yarns. And I just do it with the tip of the needle. I'll just tease out a yarn. Come on, yarn. Let's go. Okay, here we are. I'll just tease these things out like so. And the great thing about this cloth by Dalgleish is that the thread count is so very high that once I go in, I'll go in about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more, and the, th the cloth will resist it. The yarn will break as I try to get it out. So then I'll have to tease them out in short sections because if I go a half inch, it's essentially become self-sealing. It won't unravel further unless somebody's really playing with it. So it's a nod to the quality of the cloth and it produces a much uh, more finished edge or more finely fin looking edge. After this has been pressed and it's gotten wet a little bit of time, these ragged ends, these frayed ends, the wool will swell up a little bit and it'll look quite rich. I think that would be the word for it. Sumptuous, something like that. So there we go. We'll check back in when I get to the next stage, which is putting on the top apron.